right, you guys, let's talk about this camera. Hey guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video. I recently got the new Canon V10 PowerShot vlogging camera. I needed a second shooter. Before this, the only camera I had is the one that I'm currently filming on. It is the Canon M200. And I'm always very uneasy about only having one camera because if I only have one and anything happens to it, then my channel would have to go dark until I could replace it. Additionally, I was going to a few events where I couldn't bring in a camera with a detachable lens, which is the case with the M200. So I was in the market for a second shooter. I wanted something that was a point and shoot something that would be convenient and a little bit smaller that's more comfortable to vlog with when I'm out and about or especially at like big events and stuff where I need to be able to vlog easily and I would prefer to be able to vlog a little bit more inconspicuously. I did a ton of research on cameras. The other cameras that I considered were the Sony RX100s. I was going to get an older model but there was a whole thing with that where I hadn't realized that for the price point I was looking at the cameras that they were offering were international cameras and not US based cameras so they didn't come in English and they didn't come with Wi-Fi. Two things that obviously are not going to fly, especially because I only know English. And then I was also considering the Canon GX7 Mark lines, either the Mark II or the Mark III. Those were a little bit above the price point that I was looking at for a second shooter, but it was still something that I was definitely considering. But then I came across the Canon V10, and I first saw this on Laura DIY's vlogging channel. She used it for one of her vlogs, and I was actually fairly impressed with it. For such a small camera on her channel, it looked really, really good. And then I also saw that Anna Sitar started using it for her vlogging channel. I don't think she uses it for every video, but I do know she's used it for at least two or three videos recently. And then I also know that Emma Chamberlain has been promoting this camera as well, and I figured if this camera is good enough for those girls, then it should be good enough for me for a second shooter. So I went ahead and ordered it, and I definitely have some thoughts on it because one of the biggest problems with this camera when I was doing research was that a lot of the actual reviews that I was seeing were more tech-based reviews as opposed to reviews coming from creators who do what I do with more casual daily vlogging. A lot of the reviews that were out there were focused on more of the mechanics of the camera, the technical abilities of the camera, and things like that. And while I do appreciate that information, and that is some things that I do definitely take into mind, there's a much bigger picture that I'm looking at when it comes to a camera. And I feel like those types of reviews really missed the mark. So my goal for this review is to give you guys a well-rounded review coming from someone who is a casual vlogger, who does daily vlogging and things like that, and give you guys my honest thoughts on this beyond just the technical capabilities of this camera. But if you're new here, I just want to welcome you to my channel. I create content on fashion, beauty, and lifestyle. Obviously, I vlog a lot. If you love vlogs, definitely subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. And for everyone watching this, please make sure to like this video and leave me a comment down below. So before we dig into this, I did jot down some notes. I wanted to make sure I was thorough in everything that I wanted to tell you guys and anything that I feel like someone who does similar to what I do might have questions on. So you guys might see me refer back to my phone and stuff. But first off, I got this camera about, I think like three weeks ago or so, and I made a concerted effort to use it for all of my vlogs between unboxing it and this review so that I could really experience the camera and give you guys the best information that I could. In the future, I do feel like this is definitely going to be more of a second shooter and I'll get to why a little later in this video. I think the main will still continue to be this camera. I just would switch out the lens. Right now, you guys are on a pancake lens and it's really, really cropped in. I'm sitting pretty far back, but when I'm vlogging, it's really, really close to my face. So that was the other reason why I wanted a second shooter, but I am realizing I could just throw the kit lens back on this camera. But again, I still do plan to use this camera fairly regularly because I definitely feel like there are some really great benefits to this camera. But I am a proponent of bad news first and good news last to end on a good note. So I'm gonna go through some of the things that I don't really love about this camera first. I'm not gonna do a technical walkthrough of this camera in this video. Like I said, there's a lot of technical reviews out there on this camera. Just a brief overview of it. It is a wide angle lens, which is the thing that initially attracted me to this camera. I've always wanted to be able to vlog on a wide angle lens. I've been cropped in for so long and before that I've just like had the standard kit lenses. So a wide angle lens really really appealed to me. The other thing as you guys can see this camera is freaking small. It is tiny. Like that is it compared to my hand and I have a really really small hand. It's also super super lightweight and I'm not gonna lie when you first get it in and you feel it, it feels very very plasticky. So at first I was like ooh this isn't gonna go over really well but I will say one pro that I'll go ahead and throw in here because it's relevant is that for as plasticky as it feels it's actually really resilient. I've dropped it a couple times and 
it's totally fine. It hasn't had any issues, which is one of the things that I was worried about with getting a Cybershot or a Canon GX point and shoot camera. If you drop those cameras and you damage the body or the lens, especially the lens on those types of cameras are really, really, really easy to damage. Those cameras are done. You have to replace the entire thing, which is why I had initially switched to cameras with detachable lenses. That way, should anything happen to the camera, the damage is compartmentalized. But for this camera, like I said, I have banged it on things. I have dropped it and it is still doing really really great so for as I hate to say it cheap as it kind of feels when it comes in because it feels very light like I said it feels very plasticky it is quite resilient I don't know what they did but they really did build this to be a camera that you can take out and about and it's gonna survive but this camera is very different in that you shoot with it vertically and I don't know why there's just something about shooting vertically like this that just feels not as obvious as when I'm shooting horizontally with this camera out in public I think it's because you know when we're shooting with our phones it's vertical so this to people just doesn't look as obvious I mean I feel like I look obvious because I have a mic on here which I'll get to in a second but for the most part like if I took this off and I was just kind of trying to subtly shoot and stuff I doubt very many people would notice so for this camera the screen flips up that was a huge huge thing of mine that is why I did not consider the Sony VZ1 cameras I think that's what that line is called I cannot stand a screen that flips out to the side I can't stand the idea of me vlogging and constantly doing this in my vlogs it would drive me up a wall I can barely stand it when I see people do it in their vlogs but to sit there and edit myself watching myself do that over and over again to check the viewfinder it was gonna be enough that is always my first deal breakers with camera is if the screen flips up and that checked off the box for me on this one and then once you flip it up it does have a tripod that can come out so that you can kind of sit it where you want to you can have it lean back and stuff I will say though the tripod is great but this will actually on a flat surface stand up on its own no problem it's very stable and flat on the bottom so you don't necessarily need to put the tripod out unless you want to lean it a certain angle or something like that the buttons on the back here are very very simple as you guys can see you just have your on button this button functions to transfer your photos or your videos wirelessly this is the playback button and then the menu and then we just have a little navigation wheel info set and then trash or timer if you're familiar with the Canon menu this menu is gonna be really easy to navigate that is one thing that I will give Canon over Sony the menu for Canon cameras tends to be very very user-friendly very beginner friendly as opposed to the menu for Sony cameras, but I started vlogging on Sony cameras. Sony is actually truthfully my preference. It's very odd to me that my current cameras that I'm using are both Canons, but I digress. My whole reasoning for preferring Sony over Canon is a whole different video in itself. But anyways, that's all to say. The menu is actually a little bit more specialized and smaller than the standard Canon camera menus. So again, it's going to be even more easy to navigate, even more user friendly. And then one big thing that was a huge selling point for me on this, obviously, is this mic jack. I missed using a mic when I'm vlogging, so to be able to have that back was like a big win for me. But it has a mic jack on this side as well as an HDMI plug. And then on this side is a C-type port where you charge your camera. So one thing that I know a lot of people complain about this camera is the fact that there is no external battery. Once the camera dies, you do have to charge it, but you can use any C-type charger and just keep filming along. But digging into what I don't like about this camera, there are definitely quite a few drawbacks to this camera and some of these may be deal breakers for you and some of these may not really matter to you. But one of the big things that I don't really love about this camera is sometimes the lighting is really really awful in this like it ends up being super super blown out the worst places are my car whenever I'm vlogging in my car in this camera it is gonna be really hit or miss if the footage is gonna look good I've had times in the car where the footage has ended up looking great but I would say most of the time when I'm filming in the car I really hate the footage because of the lighting I don't know what it is I feel like anytime your foreground is really dark and then the backgrounds really light it just messes with this camera this camera does not have the capability abilities to even that out as well as other cameras so it can end up looking hazy it can end up looking blown out things like that which is kind of a bummer but it's not something for me that's so bad that I wouldn't use this camera I'm just more mindful about when I am vlogging to make sure that I am checking the viewfinder to see how the lighting is and then if it's not looking good wait till like I drive into a spot that's a little bit better lighting or I just move the camera if I'm just sitting in my car filming the other thing that's not great with this camera is that the battery life I feel like is a little bit loud when I'm like daily vlogging it's fine because it's not like I'm out for like 12 hours without having a chance to recharge it but if I were to use this for like 
an event that I'm gonna be at all day. Like I took this to Coastal Country Jam and I made sure to have like three or four external chargers because I knew the battery life on this camera was not gonna last all day. I wish that they would improve the battery life on this, but I feel like part of why the battery life is so bad is because to get the quality that I like, I have to film in a certain setting and that setting heats up battery like crazy. But it's not a deal breaker for me personally because I am used to carrying a portable charger with me pretty much all the time. I mean, look back at any of my what's in my bag videos and there's always a portable charger in my bag and they were smart to make this a C-type because I have an Android and I can use the charger that I use for my phone on this camera as well. So the whole short battery life and not having an external battery, while it's not the most convenient situation, again, it's not so inconvenient for me that it's a deal breaker. It's actually very, very easy for me personally to navigate, but for some people, I can definitely see how that would be a huge issue. But just for reference, a lot of the time I keep one of these types of chargers in my car at all times and in my purse. And these are just super easy because you don't need a cord and it's very easy to just pop it right into the camera like so and just keep on vlogging. One other con on this that would be a con for other people, it's not for me because I'm very weird. I like smaller things like whenever I'm designing a document and stuff, I prefer smaller fonts, things like that. So this isn't a deal breaker for me, but I do want to point it out because it can be for some people who maybe don't have great eyesight. And that's the fact that the viewfinder on this, I'll go ahead and turn this on so you guys can get an idea. The viewfinder is very, very small. Like it's tiny. So if you don't have good eyes, you may have an issue being able to see yourself really well in this camera. Another issue that I have with this camera is the lighting and color balance. I wish that I could have a little bit more control over the color balance. I tend to prefer my videos to be a little bit on the cooler side just because I don't like too much warmth. And I also hate it when the tint on my clips pull magenta. With this camera, you have zero control over the color balance. And unfortunately, it's just gonna pull what it pulls in a lot of times in areas like my bathroom that have more yellow lighting and things like that, this does pull more magenta magenta, which I don't really love. But when I'm just like in pure lighting, like in front of a window or in front of like a light like this, the color balance and lighting is really wonderful. So it's just certain instances where the color balance on this just really drives me up a wall. And then my biggest drawback with this and a reason why I did consider returning it is that for the quality of clips that I want, I have to film in the highest setting on this, which is one of the, like the 4K settings, which like I mentioned earlier, that does eat up battery so much. It also overheats the camera. I can't film more than like a 15 minute clip. Not that I'm ever really trying to when I'm vlogging because when I do clips that are too long and then I go to edit it, I like hate myself. So, I mean, it does kind of keep me in check, but yeah, that setting will overheat the camera. It will drain the battery. And the biggest problem with filming in that setting is the fact that when I import it into my computer, it takes up so much memory on my computer. My computer is constantly having a problem supporting the size of the 4K files from this camera into iMovie. And then while I'm on it, one thing I do also want to point out for anyone who's considering this camera, it takes a micro SD card, not your standard SD card. So just keep that in mind. That has not been a problem for me at all. In fact, I was able to get a much larger memory for a smaller price point buying a micro SD card versus a regular SD card. So to me, that was actually kind of a win. But yeah, the size of the files for the quality that I'm getting is very improportionate. It's almost not worth the inconvenience of how big these files are for the fact that I'm not wowed by the quality. Like I said, all of the other cons were not deal breakers for me. None of those made me even consider returning the camera, but that particular con really did make me consider a couple times returning this camera. But I've ultimately decided not to return this camera and to keep it as a second shooter for all of the many pros slash benefits that I find when using this camera. Number one, the ease of vlogging with this camera. You guys, I I've never felt more natural vlogging in my life. It's so easy to vlog with this camera. The buttons are placed in like the perfect spots. It's easy to turn on and start recording from here. I mean, my fingers are already on the on button and then the record button here in the front. And then if I'm facing the other way, I do have to find the on button, but to record again, my finger is already on that record button. So it's very, very fast and easy to turn this camera on and start recording in a second. And it turns on right away and it starts recording right away when you press record. That's one issue that I have with this camera and some of the other cameras that I've used in the past usually it takes a second or two for the camera to turn on and then sometimes there's like a lag when you start recording but this one that's not the case it's designed to be very easy and convenient to whip out and start recording at the drop of a hat sorry all the battery died on this camera see no matter what your battery can die so the whole no external battery on this camera it's a moot argument to me but anyways this camera is the easiest to vlog with that i've ever experienced it's lightweight it's small it can literally go in your pocket and the fact that it can stand up on its own and it has the tripod makes it very very easy to set up and be 
be able to shoot wherever you go. So especially for someone who vlogs their day going out and about all the time, this camera literally just kind of like revolutionizes the ease of being able to do that. It's so good for that. It really feels like they thought of everything vlogging wise coming from a user standpoint on this design. I mentioned this earlier, but I love the mic jack. It's so nice to be able to have a mic jack. I'm so glad that they thought to add that into the camera. I think without the mic jack, if I remember correctly, the mic that's on this camera is actually not too bad. I believe it's up here. It's not bad at all. It definitely picks up sound pretty well, but being able to kind of elevate that sound with having the option of using a mic is such a big selling point and win on this camera. For anyone who's wondering, I have the Comica mic on this one. I will link the exact one down below, but it was only 25 bucks and I've just noticed it just makes a huge difference as far as audio goes when I'm recording. So that was one thing that I was sad about when my Sony a6400 bit the bullet was that I no longer had a mic jack because this camera does not have a mic jack. So to be able to get the use of this mic back has been one of my favorite things about this. This camera also has an auto ND filter. Like I had mentioned before, the lighting isn't always great in the car, but when I'm moving from inside to outside, the ND filter makes that transfer with the lighting so much quicker and faster than when I'm recording on this camera. I've always meant to put an ND filter on this camera, so it's nice that it's already built into this one. Another big plus that I really like about this camera, again, it still kind of goes back to the functionality of vlogging with this, but when you're recording, there is a red border that pops up to make it very, very obvious that you're filming. So right now we're not filming, and then filming and you guys can see that red border. There's so many times that I've been vlogging with this camera, with my old Sony cameras, all of that kind of stuff, and I thought I was recording and I wasn't because it's just a little tiny red dot. So to have that red border is so obvious and I've run into so much less instances of that happening where I thought I was recording but I wasn't since I've been using this camera. We already also talked about that I love the fact that this is a wide angle lens. I will say when you go into the stabilization settings, it does crop it in a little bit. Any camera is gonna do that when you activate a stabilization setting but even on the highest stabilization setting, the enhanced level that crops it in the most, I still feel like the angle on this is still super wide. And speaking of stabilization, I do record on the highest level of stabilization and this camera is so good. Recording walking with this camera has been the smoothest footage that I've ever experienced. I have vlogged on the Sony a6400, Canon M200, and then like back in the day, the Sony DSCH. X80 I think was my first camera. Footage was always so shaky whenever I was walking with the camera, but on this, on the enhanced stabilization, it is so, so smooth. It just like, it totally blows me away. But overall, those are my major pros and cons of this camera. I will say one that I did not touch on because I actually kind of found out for me that it kind of like fixed itself in here. As I mentioned, this is a wide angle lens and it is technically a fixed angle. You can't do the traditional zoom in on something on this camera, but it does have a digital zoom setting. So basically what that means, it's as if you were to import the footage into iMovie and then just crop in. So you can do that within this camera itself. And I actually used that when I went to Coastal Country Jam and I used the highest digital zoom and you do lose a little bit of stabilization with that. I mean, even on a traditional camera that can zoom in the traditional way, the more you zoom, the grittier the footage might get. But I feel like this camera, it actually wasn't too bad. Yes, I did lose a little stabilization and a little bit of detail doing the digital zoom, but I feel like it still looked pretty damn good. So the whole technically not being able to zoom issue is not really a problem for me at all when it comes to this camera. But overall, like I said, I think that there's a ton of pros and cons to this camera. I think it's great depending on what you're looking for. I think that this camera is great for both beginners and seasoned vloggers. For beginners, if you're making that transition from your phone to a camera, this is a great one to kind of like step up to that next level if you're not ready to get a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. And I know one of the arguments that some more technical reviews have made have said like for what you're getting with this camera, you might as well just film with your phone. I don't agree with that. I will say though, anyone who is just starting out on YouTube, I always say film with your phone. Do not purchase a camera until you know for sure you want to continue going with YouTube. And I did that myself in the beginning, but I don't think that that's sustainable to continue filming with only your phone because it's going to eat up so much memory and battery on your phone. Clips for vlogging can get very long and very big. So I think past having a channel for a couple months to like six months, you really should be getting a camera and not relying on just your phone. I'm not saying to never film on your phone, I'm saying you should have a camera as well. And I think that this one is a really great beginner slash intermediate level of camera for someone in that point in their YouTube journey. For a seasoned vlogger, I've pretty much said it for myself. This is a wonderful second shooter. If I'm going to be going to a theme park, if I'm going to be going to something like Coastal Country Jam, or I'm going to be out and about all day, I want the convenience of being able to shoot. I want something lightweight, something small. This camera is really, really great for that. Again, it's very durable. I don't really worry that much about whenever I've dinged it or dropped it. And it absolutely 
gets the job done. And there's so many workarounds to like the whole battery and lack of zooming capabilities. So overall, I do recommend the Canon V10 for anyone who is a daily vlogger, casual vlogger, things like that. I think it's a great little camera. I think that they've really thought it through to be a great tool as far as vlogging equipment goes. The biggest drawback, again, is gonna be the size of the files to record in 4K because you are not gonna get great quality recording in 1080p. I tried it for a couple clips in one of my videos and I absolutely hated it. So that is gonna be a huge thing. So just know you'll be working with big files to get good quality from this camera. But that is gonna be it for this review. I hope that this review helped for anybody who's been curious about this camera, who's been wondering about it, considering buying it. I hope that I answered all of your questions about this camera in this video. But if there was anything that I missed, as always, please make sure to leave me a comment down below. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you are new here. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon again in my next video. Bye.